Hey guys, the Monk 52 here, of course, and today we're discussing the Akuryu. So, let's see. First off, recommended mod, uh, air aircraft restoration time. We don't need to spec for secondaries. This is a carrier. It's not like it's actually going to get involved in the fight. You have to send your planes or the fight. Unless you're craft Zeppelin, even then, still. Secondary mod, aircraft, uh, gr air groups mod 2, just more planes. Concealed mod uh, is a given. And aircraft, air groups mod 3 is fine. You don't need more speed, uh, aircraft speed as they already are the fastest aircraft in the game at the minute. So, yeah, pretty much, pretty standard bulk, standard uh, modules. It's very difficult to get them wrong with carriers. As you can see, we'll take a look at raw stats here. We're using Ion as a commander. Yes, as a vent commander. We'll show you the options here. Swatting it flies. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, hidden threats. Burn, be burn. And then for the patch, we're not using swatting a, uh, not using the range uh, any of them. So we just get a bit more detectability. Space fishy as well, if you can. So we're pretty hefty on the uh, event commander. So we'll give it a free to play option right here. There we go. There is he. Here's a Tamagun. There we go. Tamagun here with uh, the similar build. Just a little bit more in focus on stealth here. You could run the, uh, the bomb skill though, that will help you out, and then uh, Swirsky and Ransom Tanaka, which are your free play, free to play options really. Now, this is with Iota by the way, you get a 32 second restoration time for both your dive and torpedo bombers. Pretty hefty uh, numbers there, you can pause them if you want. So pretty high alpha on both bombers, you get a very high alpha on the torpedoes, but uh, drop, midway drops 4, Hikuri only drops 2. Close to 10k alpha on your torpedoes. If you're comparing these, the plane health to Saipan, Saipan actually wins in plane health, which is kind of bonkers because it's a legendary tier carrier, but it really is not too much of a fight. It's not too, not too far off for legendary plane health there. So pretty darn exceptional. In terms of plane speed, we're using a uh, star scheme on our Parsifal to gain our speed any more. 192 knots compared to the bombers who go 196. The two bombers are lacking a little bit behind, but still the fastest planes in the game which is quite exceptional indeed. And again, if not even using Starscream, you can make those two, up to 200 dot planes without a doubt. So yeah, other than that, these are the, uh, here's the line of the stats here for you guys. You can pause if you want. <clears throat> With Camel on, you can go down a pretty stealthy build. They're usually quite stealthy, these carriers, but you can get them down to 11 buddy with a full stealth build. Uh, again, you could also run to, uh, uh, Swirsky for the additional concealment as well. Armor is very special. You have deck plating that will bounce Yamato. You've got Citadel that will also bounce Yamato. And I mean Yamato means bounce everything in the game you could possibly bounce. So yeah, pretty darn durable, unfortunately, uh, for anyone who wants to think, hey, you know, I've seen the carrier, I can kill him. Well, if he's broadside maybe, but 68 mm of deck armor, everything else is pretty darn tanky. The entire bow is cased. The entire deck of the boat is just gonna shatter and bounce Yamato shells. So yeah, um, basically very nasty and just horrific to deal with. So yeah, same thing with Midway, by the way. I know we're not discussing the Midway in this game, but I just thought I'd highlight that as well. So this is, yeah, we'll see how disgusting it is. Midway's a little bit worse because it's got a space, space citadel, but Akiri does not, but still, my goodness. All right, we'll jump right into the match with the Hikuryu and Showcase. Uh, how I'd recommend we run the boat. So for this game here, we're fighting another CC, which is quite funny. We're also fighting Lennon Beak, which is, I mean, it's quite comical. We're fighting the same CC for our initial impression video and then the same one for the, 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 the masterclass. So, but yeah, there we go. Anyway, we've got Yugamo to deal with. Besides that, no other destroyers, but they've got Minotaur and other stuff as well. Now, uh, I, didn't have, I didn't get a good look right now because I'm doing the pre-recording. This is not this is not live recording. But uh, yeah, honestly, with Hikuryu, just like all targets and carriers, you want to be focusing targets that are uh, on their own, pushing a threat to your team, and then last uh, but not least, people with, with the least AA as well. So Musashi is a target for us. If we can hit Musashi, if we can see Musashi, we'll try and drop him, assuming he's not uh, protected by too much AA bubbles. One thing I've noticed by after playing uh, quite a few matches in the Kiryu, you basically don't pre-drop. Uh, maybe the Tapir Bomb, maybe the Tapir Bomb should pre-drop. But honestly, you don't need to pre-drop whatsoever. Um, you don't lose planes. Basically, it's actually you're gonna try. You're gonna have to try very hard to lose planes in a Kiryu that doesn't just straight up regenerate everything because it's actually bonkers the regenerate of these planes. You're getting almost twenty fighters the whole game. Of course, of the game. Tw so not fight, not fighters. There, you're getting twenty planes back. The whole game, where if you have like a full eye on a build, it's kind of bonkers that regenerate, and it's very, very strong. So you see, we isolated uh, somewhat alone, Misashi. We're never obviously, and at the start of the game, they're always going to be somewhat gripped up. 
So what I'd recommend is you just flying around the map and just letting all the tar letting all the enemy targets up for your team to shoot and uh, maybe spot the DTE, something like that before you pick your first strike target. In this case, we went around most of the map. We went a little bit, a little bit around. We didn't go a full recon. Sometimes you can. It's more for cases when there's a lot of AA about. Just doing a full recon is more beneficial because as a carrier, you are the eyes of the team. You will spot more than any destroyer can. You will spot a massive amount. So we just got our first bomb drop off. Only one torpedo hit, but as you can see, it wasn't on the belt, and it's pretty much 8,000 damage already. Again, it's not impressive in terms of midway's performance, but as a general carrier, it's pretty impressive. That's 20k. 22k with a flood as well, so that's pretty nasty. 22k off first off a two drop there, and we landed. We missed one to be on that drop that exchange with a boat that has the best, technically the best to be protection in the game. Not bad at all, really. Not bad at all. Now, we we'll swap out the rotation. You can use the bombers. Obviously, you when you run these things, if you don't swap them out, you're gonna run it to one too thick too quickly. I did say planes regenerate really quickly. It's actually gonna be very difficult for you to. Uh, lose a squadron or like lose out on your bombers and your torpedo bombers but a general rule of thumb with both carriers is you try you you run to your bombers then you swap out to be bombers then you swap it out you just keep rotating it back and forth giving your extra bombers or whatever it is whatever you've used last time to regenerate plus send back your for your previous squadron so we mess up this drop here and i'm not happy with this it's a big potato on our part here you need to pre. Uh, need to. I'm a bit too aggressive with carriers. I like to use the throttle way too much. I'd recommend more patience. I don't have it, but hey, you might. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I need to be more patient, and you make. You need to give a lot of lead for destroyers. So that white line needs to be way ahead of them. I do make up for it here with this drop here. Again, I'm holding off as long as possible because that is when you get the nice shots on those destroyers. If you can get a long wind up and you've got a lot of good room to maneuver your bombs get some really good shots here again we don't have much planes here left we could call back the squadron but it's only a destroyer the battleship is not too far in the range so we can again hold on as long as we can the longer we wait the better we just fire off here that's the best we got actually get another hit quite a lucky hit there and that's a lot of damage done to that gearing i think so that's pretty as you go sorry so that's pretty darn good starting off there and yeah We'll, do, we'll push on and swap it to be bombers because if you're just constantly using the one type so if you're just constantly using the bad uh, die bombers you probably will run out of planes but the way you're rotating it constantly will help occasionally you need you may need to run two sets to be bombers or two sets of die bombers that's okay but if in in, in rule of thumb for most carrier gameplays and most carrier games you will so we'll be swapping out every every run you do so you know one run of team bombers one run, one run of die bombers you notice I'm not doing any pre-drops again, you just, I just said before, you just don't need to do it. And despite you having a larger health point and the armour of the carrier, that is very good, you still don't want to get yourself spotted, you can get yourself smacked pretty easily, so you want to get as close to the action as possible. You don't want to be hugging the white line, you see occasionally I will move the carrier about. Um, if there's more action on the south side for the carrier, I'll move the carrier south, and if there's more action north side, I'll do the same. And if there's an island I can push towards that will be safe for me to get to, and it means I'm closer to the enemy team, the better. Because I can more cycle more planes, I can get more done. Um, yeah, the closer you are, the more effective you are in a carrier, but of course you run the risk of being spotted and potentially getting blapped. It's a bit less risky than in the, in the Kudu and Midway because the legendary carrier can bounce everything in the game, because <clears throat> reasons. But uh, if they catch you broadside or... You know, they somehow don't bounce on your armor scheme. Maybe they get a penetration. I don't know. Um, yeah, you will take some damage. You're still going to die. You're not invincible, but you're pretty nasty. Like, I'm not going to lie. I've seen people bounce Yamato shells off the hull of the Kuryu. And yeah, it's pretty bonkers. That range, they will struggle because they have to get through that deck armor. And it's just such a thick deck armor. It's very difficult for them to actually penetrate. Now... Uh, as you can see, we've had really good dominant control of the cats. We've lost our destroyer, which is not good, but the other destroyer that we chunked pretty heavily is probably suffering the case of too terrified to go for a cap because carrier will destroy him and make his day just painful, as it more already is. We're dropping this Alaska, so yeah, we'll just do what we can. Rooting him out from this cap here because he was being a bother, trying to reset us and try and capture Bravo. We can't have that. He's the guy pushing, so we're going to chunk him for 9k with three bomb heads there. And just top it off, let's give it an extra fire. Now, we could send back these planes, but again, why not just send something? You never might get one extra fire, it might do something. We're still probably going to get one drop. Maybe this second, oh, the second one's alive. Uh, okay, no, there you go, it does go down. 
do the drop here. We do land it. That's an extra wee defended ribbon here. He's poking in. He's a little bit close to us as well. We're getting a little bit close. We're going to have to run away a little bit more because Alaska could get spotted. We're not necessarily worried about the Alaska. It's just anything else. The other battleships behind him are the problem. But as you can see, um, yeah, we've, we've gave that DD some PTSD, unfortunately. <laughs> He's, it's just it's disgusting. And this isn't even the damage focus carrier. The midway is, is without the doubt, the damage focus carrier. The Kuryu is definitely the, the survivor. Doesn't matter what you do to a Kuryu. Um, it's pretty much always going to have planes ready to kill you with. So Alaska gets spotted for too long and Yamato decides he's had enough of that bullshit and just takes him out really. We do get spotted temporarily but it really means nothing here. Uh, I'm just going to hold off in this squadron here and just see what I can do to, for spotting. Uh, yeah, spotting has been key. We've been spotting the enemy team for quite some time and that's probably why we won here. Uh, even though they had a destroyer, it matters not. If the destroyer's not being helpful towards his team, there's no point going after him and chasing all the damage. Speaking of which, we do actually see him here. Again, even if we don't are not successful with our drops, which is perfectly fine, we're only dropping two torpedoes per salvo, which means it's pretty hard to hit DDs who are actively dodging your torps. But again, the whole problem with CDs and torpedo boats is simply active spotting and the permanent sonar it provides to your team. Basically, this Yugamo can't play the game at all, so it's pretty darn rough. And that torpedo looks like a hit home, actually, so there we go. Uh, we do actually get a drop off on him there. I think he just gave up, and I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe he didn't see it coming. Maybe he was looking elsewhere. So, yeah. We've got a Conqueror left who's going to take us some time to die, because, again, Conqueror with the Super Heal is going to be a, a pain to deal with, but hey, we'll deal if we can. Carrier is sufficiently far away, we probably could move it, but we're doing in the middle of a drop, so we'll leave it for later. Again, these torpedoes hit really hard. These are 10k torps, really high damaging carrier torps. They hit harder than some uh, actual surface torpedoes, which is kind of bonkers. We're going to turn back in towards A, get ourselves a little bit closer to the fight here, but it really doesn't matter at this point. We've got such a commanding points lead, <clears throat> we can do what we want, honestly. It doesn't really matter. See, yeah, we're actually going to readjust ourselves and get ourselves into B. Unfortunately, the way that autopilot works, we can't just uh, we can't turn the other way. It's, it's you have to just uh, select the, the the square in the map and hope for the best in terms of in terms of taking the best route. But hey, you know, you never know. So yeah, uh, we're a bit, a bit of a long journey because we're a bit far away, but we'll we'll, we'll get to the conquer pretty soon because again, these are very fast planes. Now, um. They've lost a destroyer, as we saw, because we torpedoed the man. We've got a massive points lead, and we all we need to do is just make sure that uh, we keep that points lead. And that's all we really need to do. We're not going to have to kill anybody. We're not going to kill Conqueror anytime soon. Republic goes down by the Des Moines, who's been playing extremely well, too, by the way. That's always nice. Uh, this was, uh, I think it was pre nerfed Des Moines. I'm not even sure at this point. You guys can tell me in the comments below if this was a uh, pre nerfed Des Moines or post nerfed Des Moines. So yeah, we're just going to drop the Conqueror again. And this is a pretty good target to test out our, our main Alpha's damage here. We do mess up that drop there. We swung a bit to the side. We just missed everything. But hey, we'll make up for it. Um, it's very difficult to do that. It's very easy to do that. And something to note as well. So you've seen two bad drops. You've seen a really bad bomb drop. And you've seen another bad bomb drop. <laughs> so, you know, line them up. Wait for a minute. Try not to manoeuvre it too much because it can swing out of control very easily and you get a nice good drop like that. That's 13k with all three bomb hits there. So that's a pretty good alpha strike considering you can also do a double or even triple fire considering you've got three shells. So yeah, pretty nasty potential there. But yeah, we're going to pick up here. We'll go back to a few bombers. But yeah, sometimes I do mess up in these, things, these games plays and that's perfectly fine as long as you don't mess up the entire game. A couple of times messing up is more helpful to you guys because, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. And uh, it can show you how it can all go wrong, you know. Uh, waiting too long for DDs and your bombers. Give extra lead. That's really something to note. And make sure you have that window op opportunity. You want to drop as late as possible when it comes to the Japanese bombs and the American bombs. Especially on destroyers because the small reticle will help you out. And uh, when it comes to um, uh, heading on battleships and getting as much as you can. And much as a ship in the reticle. Very important that uh, you don't swing it too much, you don't do too much adjustment. You line up, it's all about the line up basically, is what I'm trying to say here. <clears throat> As you can see, we've got a Mino and a Conqueror, that's a fair amount of AA. So we're just going to use our consumable here, we don't really, not much left the game left anyway, so we're just going to do that, fire the torpedoes off. Again, these torpedoes, they only drop two, but they do hit 
10k a pop, again, without to be protection kicking in. So pretty high damage numbers, uh, considering this is a legendary carrier, honestly. And it's, it's, it's kind of bonkers. So we're just farming these two. We're not having a worry in the threat in the world. And you may think, oh, hey, we've been dropping full squadrons this entire game. Surely we're low on planes, right? Right? <laughs> we've got nine bombers and we've got, I can't even see that number. Uh, I think that's six. Yeah, six. Uh, bombers in reserve so we've got a fair amount of bombers <laughs> it's kind of 15 out of 18 and the whole game's passed and we're we're doing this sort of AA and we've got 11 out of, of, of uh, 20 is it? 11 out of 20 uh, to, be, to be bombers it's kind of insane if you look at our uh, play, uh, 12 isn't it? 12 yeah we actually kill the conqueror of flooding which is kind of bonkers it's just, it's just insane. Just insane. You just don't run out of planes. Haiku to you doesn't run out of planes. I could give uh, so many people clear skies, it wouldn't make a difference. The amount of planes you regenerate as well, it's just, just insane. It's it's an actual factory of planes. I believe it says in the overview. Overviews are really accurate, but it does actually say fact, plane factory, and that is 100% right. It literally fact, it just generates planes. Just it just, just It just spits them out. It really does. And we've got so much more to give this game here, honestly. We could easily just kill this Mino, then go after the carrier, last but not least. But uh, I believe the points will probably have a thing, to say, a thing or two to say about that. We're 956 points. The match is basically over. Good dodge by the Mino. He actually stays perfectly still and dodges both sets because I thought he'd some, do something to remove her. But again, this is this, you know, RNG of the torpedo uh, uh, spread sometimes when you don't fully aim it. So we're trying to do more. We give the minor clear sky, but it really doesn't matter. Not at all. Uh, clear sky is a placebo effect when it comes to the accuracy. <laughs> it means nothing. So also, you know, fighters are coming in masses and they're just literally a consumable that you have. Uh, a fair amount of consumable as well, quite a lot. So, just, you know, again, sending another basically full squadron on the HE on the Mino and we reach 1,000 points. That's pretty much it. So, yeah. Pretty darn bonkers, um, hope, you, hope this helps when you're playing Kakuryu, it's pretty easy to play though, but yeah, 150k, 12 torpedo hits, 12 bomb hits, 4 fires, 2.8k with the moines topping out there, still not bad at all, uh, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video as always, and I'll catch you on the flip side, bye for now.